So let's get into it. Today we're going to do practice problems for chapter 24. Um, well, this was all about induction. And I got my equations on the top like usual. Um, this is for all LC circuits, but we're not going to talk about that for now. For now, let's talk about induction. That if you have a changing magnetic flux in a circuit, or the magnetic flux through a circuit, assuming the circuit makes a loop, assuming the circuit makes a loop, if the magnetic flux through it starts changing, you induce an EMF. When you induce an EMF, that means you create a voltage, which in part will create a current. So um, these problems, like always, we can go through them. Um, the second one is probably the one closest to what was on last semester's exam, but I will post last semester's exam at some point in the near future so you can see what I did. But let's just start at the beginning. It says, a loop of wire of radius 0.3 meters um, lies so that an external magnetic field of magnitude 0.3 Tesla is perpendicular to the loop. So I got a loop of wire, a radius of 0.3 meters, and I have a magnetic field that's perpendicular. So I'm going to say the magnetic field is just coming out of the page. It could be into the page. We don't know. It just says perpendicular, so that works. The field reverses its direction, which means it's going to go from what I just drew to now going the opposite way. And, it, and its magnitude changes as it does it. Find the magnitude of the average induced EMF. Basically, what I'm going to say is I'm going to have a B initial of, of 0.3 Tesla. And afterwards, I'm going to have a B final of 0.2 Tesla. But they're in opposite directions. So I have to say one of these two is negative. It doesn't really matter which one I make negative. As long as I make one of them negative, um, I'll make the second one negative just because um, that's the way I drew it. But I only ask for the magnitude. So it doesn't matter which. Now, they say that the magnetic field is perpendicular to the loop. That means the magnetic field is parallel to the normal of the loop, which means our theta is zero degrees. And so we can find the, so we want to find the induced EMF. The induced EMF is negative n change in flux over change in time. It's only one loop though. And they ask for magnitude. Because it's one loop, I can get rid of my n. And because I ask for magnitude, I can get rid of the negative sign. And I'll just say change in flux over change in time. If I kept the negative sign there, which I think in my solution looking at it, I did. I left the negative sign there all along. That's good. We'll leave the negative sign just for fun. I asked for magnitude, so it won't make a difference. Now, flux, what flux is, is mag magnetic field, area, cosine of the angle. But as I already said, the angle is zero degrees. So in today's example, it would just be BA. And I'm just going to plug that in to my EMF equation. So the EMF is negative change in BA over change in time. Now, the area isn't changing. It never mentions anywhere. So the change in area would just be the area. It's not changing. Only the magnetic field is changing. And you can do that. Whatever isn't changing, you can pull out of your change in thing. Now, area, the circle, it's going to be pi r squared. But delta b over delta t, what that really is, is just going to be b final minus b initial over the t final minus t initial, the time it takes place. So it would be negative pi. 0.3 meters squared times B final, negative 0.2 Tesla, minus B initial, 0.3 Tesla, over the time period, 1.5 seconds. If it wasn't for the pi, this would probably work out kind of nicely. But if I do this math, and I can plug these in, I'll get an answer. Now, this didn't ask for direction because it also didn't say which way is positive, which way is negative. But let's just solve for that just for fun. If it was the way I did it, where it was initially up and then down, what that means is the magnetic field is shifting to into the page. 
if the magnetic field is shifting into the page, the induced EMF is going to try to be out of the page to undo the change. Because it's going from up to down, it's going to try to point up. And so the induced EMF, if assuming this drawing was right, would be counterclockwise for my right hand rule. But once again, I could have said it was down first, then up, so that would switch it around. But just the way I drew it, that would be the direction. Questions? No. Nope. Okay. The second problem is a little more challenging, and I said something probably more similar to what I'd put in an exam. I'd have to find, I remember the exam problem had something to do with Magneto, but that's as much as I remember. I think it involved Magneto and Colossus's arm, but I'll post the last semester's exam at some point. So the loop in the figure is being pushed into a 0.2 Tesla magnetic field at 50 meters per second. The resistance of the loop is 0.1 ohm. What is the direction and magnitude of the current in the loop? Assuming it starts out of the field completely. Okay. Basically, this may be really weird with focus, is this is what I have. I have this magnetic field and I have this loop just coming and going into it like this. Kind of weird things with colors. So initially, there's no magnetic field in the loop. Then there's some magnetic field, then a little more, then a little more, continuing, getting more and more magnetic field in the loop. That's what's happening here. Now, let's do the direction first, just for fun. That means we're adding more flux into the loop. For adding more flux into the loop, the induced EMF wants to reduce the flux. Now, since the magnetic field is out of the page right now, if it's being made bigger, we want to make it smaller. So it's going to be in the opposite direction. And so with my right hand rule, the induced EMF will have to be clockwise. That the induced EMF whew, is that way. Well, actually it's for induced current. So the induced current is definitely that way. But now we can actually solve for it. So EMF equals negative N change in flux over change in time. Well, flux is B A cosine theta. Now it's once again at zero degrees, so it's B A again. And so just like last time, I'll say the EMF equals negative N change in B A over change in time. Except N is still one. But the thing that's changing here is the magnetic field is not changing. The magnetic field is a constant. What's changing is the area of the loop, which doesn't actually make sense. Because if you look at the way I was just doing it, and let's just zoom out for a split second, the loop itself is not changing area. It's the part of the magnetic field in the loop. But that's the thing, is that's all we care about. We don't care about this area down here with no magnetic field in it. We only care what the part with the magnetic field. And so what's actually changing is the fraction of the magnetic field that is, that, sorry, the area that has magnetic field in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define things on my figure. And I'm going to say that this thing, this loop, has a width of five centimeters, which I'm just going to call W for width. And at any given point has an amount of it in the magnetic field of, we'll just call this Y, because it's a height. Now, what part of this magnetic field is, is small? Because initially when it's like down here, Y would just be, you know, a little bit. As it gets higher, Y is gonna become a hell of a lot bigger, right? And so we'll say the area at any given point, the area within the magnetic field is going to be the width times y, the part in the magnetic field. But the width of the loop isn't changing. So I can pull that out. I'm left with negative b w, change in height over change in time. But that that's a distance over time. And if something's moving at a constant velocity, that's velocity. That's the average velocity equation. Now, if it was changing speeds, I'd have to do some crazy shit here. But if it's not changing speeds, that's my velocity. So it's negative b w v. 
at least that's the EMF. Um, I didn't ask for EMF, I asked for current, but V equals IO means also EMF equals IO. So current is EMF over resistance. And so the current is negative BWV over the resistance. Now this negative sign, what that negative sign says is that it's the opposite, is, is that that's the lenses law, right? That keep in mind, this equation without a negative sign is Faraday's law. This negative sign is Lenz's law. So really that negative sign just has to show the direction. Uh, we're just looking for magnitude now. We already worked out direction. So I'm just gonna ignore the negative sign because that's not part of magnitude. And I'll say it's the magnetic field, 0.2 Tesla times the width, 0 0.05 meters times the velocity, 50 meters per second over the resistance, a 0 0.1 ohm resistor, tiny. And it's five amps. My answer did not do sig figs, but it ended up being exactly five. So, oh, I guess it did, because it's 50 without a dot, so. And that's what it is. Any questions on that? No, Not I yet. think I got that. Okay, so as I said, I'm pretty sure that's what I did on the exam last semester. Um, I'd have to put it up and look. I haven't revisited it. <sighs> I'll throw it back online soon. Um, but there are other things I could do with this chapter. Um, oh, never mind. This is the, actually the same thing. No, this is inductance. Okay. Because if we want to make something that does this, if we want to create something that induces EMF, that's what an inductor is, right? An inductor is something purposely going out of the way to induce EMF. And so we can talk about the inductance of a set thing. So this guy here says we have a solenoid. And this solenoid, has a radius of 2.5 centimeters or 0 0.025 meters and has 400 tons at a length of 20 centimeters, 0.2 meters. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there. Solenoids, solenoids you never deal with number of tons or length. The equation for a solenoid isn't up on the screen, um, mostly because this is from last chapter. But the magnetic field of a solenoid, which no one remembered on the exam, is mu naught lowercase n um, i, where lowercase n is number of tones per length. So that's where magnetic field. Mu naught, which is given there, 400 divided by 0.2 times the current. So it then says, Find its inductance. Well, the inductance, inductance is L. And as I have written over on the screen, right here, is inductance is N flux over I. You could also use, um, I had another equation that I do, started with to derive this for solenoids that I could jump to if I happen to have that in front of me, but I decided to go with the structured equation. Now keep in mind flux, I didn't write flux here, but flux just like before is BA cosine theta. And in a solenoid, the magnetic field is always perpendicular to the curve because it's a loop that creates a magnetic field through it. So it's no gonna be no angle again. And that means that L equals N flux over current, which means it's N, the magnetic field, which is mu naught N over L, oops, L, lowercase L, I, that's B, times the area over the I. My N's factor together, my eyes cancel and it comes to this equation. 
But A, that A is just going to be the area. So it'd be n squared mu naught pi r squared over length. Which I'll plug into. Uh, 200 tones? No, 400 tones. 4 pi times 10, negative 7. Tesla meter per amp? Tesla meter per amp. Pi. All squared. And you get 0 0.002 Henry's or two miller Henry's. Now, part B says that's all well and good, but what is the rate at which current must? Sorry, what is the rate in which current must change through it to produce an EMF of seventy-five millivolts? The rate of current change, what that's going to be, and I need to make space. The rate of current change is going to be the change in current over change in time. That's the rate of the current changing. So I'll look at my equations and say, well, I have one thing for inductors. I said for inductors, the EMF equals negative L delta I over delta T, which means if I divide both sides by negative L, delta I over delta T equals the EMF over negative L. Now that negative sign is just a direction. And we didn't deal with what direction it is. So I'm just going to absolute value this guy. And I'll just say that it's 0.075 volts over 0 0.0020 Henry's to get 37.5 amps per second. Sorry, 37. I said 37 out loud, but definitely wrote 35.5. Any questions there? Uh, no. Okay. Now, on homework exams, there's going to be a lot of these induced EMFs. There will be some of these just inductance thing. But for the most part, what I'm really going to do is I'm going to kind of swap between induced EMF and all L circuits. And so I want to do one all L circuit that I'll probably end on. Oh, see the time. Depending on time, I might do the last one. Now, an all L circuit, which I put that right in the middle of the page, really wasting a lot of space. OK, that works. An all L circuit would be any time we have a resistor and an inductor, I missed that, in series hooked up to a battery with a switch. Um, and this assumes a DC circuit. For AC, we're going to get to that next chapter. That'll be Monday. And what it says is a battery is connected in series with a 0.3 ohm resistor. And an inductor. Doesn't say anything about it. The switch is closed at t equals zero. The time constant of the circuit is 0.25 seconds. And the maximum current is 8 amps. OK, first, find the EMF of the battery. Well, what we have here is a. Um, a charging up inductor. And if I look at my equations at the top, I say that I equals E over all the EMF over the resistance, one minus E to the negative t, t over tau. Slightly cut off, but I'll fix that. The maximum is going to be when this term goes away. The maximum current through the resistor is just going to be E over all. I could also just say, you know, V equals IR, the EMF equals IR, that the max that the maximum 
potential is going to be the maximum current times resistance. But the if you only have this bit, our inductors don't keep track of voltage. They only lose voltage with they lose voltage with time. But once time goes long enough, they stop losing it. And so the max e, um, the EMF of the battery will be whatever the max EMF the resistor gets. So it'll just be I max times resistance. Full uh, 2.4 volts. Part B, the inductance of the circuit. Now, there's a bunch of ways we could try to find it, but the easiest one is they gave tau and they gave O. And this isn't actually written on my thing in the upper corner. I should add that. But the time constant of an LC circuit, or LO circuit, I misspoke, is inductance over all. And therefore, the inductance is the time constant times the resistance. Or 0.3, oh, I went out of order. 0.25 seconds times 0.3 ohms. And a quarter of 0.3 is 0 0.075 Henry's. OK, part C. The current in the circuit after one time constant has elapsed. What we're basically doing is we're saying when T equals tau, what's I? So I'll go to this right equation up here and say I equals EMF over all, or just I max. I'm not going to bother EMF over all because I already know what I max is. 1 minus E to the negative tau over tau. Well, I'm just plugging in tau for T. That means it's I max 1 minus E to the negative 1. Um, so 0.8 amps, 1 minus e to the negative 1. e to the negative 1 is like 0.36 something, 0.3679. And we can do that math. Now, this last bit is something I haven't covered in class. And there's a trick to it. But it's kind of a, you should be able to logic this out. And the last bit says, what's the voltage across the inductor after one time constant has elapsed? And I haven't given an equation for the voltage across an inductor with one time constant elapsed. What we know is that as this thing is changing, is that the inductor induces a voltage, a voltage to counteract the battery. But we also know something else. We know Kirchhoff's laws, that if I do one full trip around a loop, the sum of the potentials must be 0. Which means if I do one full loop around this, the EMF of the battery minus the voltage over the resistor minus the voltage of the inductor must be 0. That's what Kirchhoff's law says. And we could talk about the EMF in, induced by um, everything, but it's easier just to say, you know what? Kochov's loop says the velocity, uh, or the velocity, the um, potential on the inductor or the voltage on the inductor is the EMF minus the current or the voltage on the battery. Wait, did I skip? Sorry, I'm on E. I skipped D, didn't I? I just realized that. I was doing E. Sorry. I was solving for the voltage on the uh, resist on the inductor. The voltage on the resistor B equals I all. It'll just be 5.06 amps times 0.3 ohms. Uh, one point. There's a mistake in my solutions, 1.5 volts. And so to find the voltage on the inductor, it'll be the battery, 2.4 volts, minus 1.5 volts, which is 0 
eight bolts. Sorry, I completely skipped D, but I went back to it. Any questions though? No. So, um, I'm trying to decide if I want to bother with the last one, because I know I'm only officially halfway through class, but theoretically, you guys were supposed to look at problems on your own beforehand. Um, the last one is very, very similar to the ones I did earlier, um, so just without numbers. So I'm not going to bother doing it. We'll just stop there because um, this would be you know, the type of stuff you can expect to see. Um, hopefully this makes sense. The induced EMF, I find it's, it's one of those things that like at first seems really confusing because the process of having a magnetic field induces a magnetic field opposing and all that crazy and stuff. But just keep a track of anytime you try to change a circuit, the circuit resists it and tries to keep the change from happening. That's all it is. Other than that, um, yeah, I'm going to stop there. I hope you all have a good weekend. Um, this is the end of DC. We are done with DC current and voltage. Um, moving forward, we will be doing switching into AC which is a little more useful most of the time because it's a little more common for what we have to deal with in the real world. But it's a lot more complicated. And so we will start next chapter with what happens when we have alternating current or voltage due to alternating current. Alternating current voltage. AC voltage is what you normally say, but that means alternating current voltage, which is weird. So voltage from a alternating current or something like that. Okay. Other than that, have a good weekend.